Hello and welcome to this course on how to design high converting websites that help you grow your business. My name is Fernando Diaz and on behalf of myself and everybody at the ATTA, we just want to let you know that we're super excited that you're here. You've made the right investment both in yourself and in your business by acquiring this course. If you apply correctly what we're going to teach you, I can guarantee that you're going to have a much better online presence. You're going to have a much better website that will give your customers clarity. Before you start um, either wandering around the platform or going into the different lessons, I just want to make sure that you watch this entire video in, from beginning to end. I'm going to be explaining some things that I think are super important as a foundation for what I will be teaching. And um, it'll also teach you how to consume and apply the material that you're going to learn. So make sure to watch this whole thing and then you can begin with the first lesson. As it relates to websites today, the main problem that most travel companies face is that they're investing marketing money and not getting any results out of it, or at least they're not getting the results that they're hoping for. Um, this includes having very talented and expensive graphic designers designing a website that in the end doesn't get you the results because the thing is that great looking websites don't sell products, but words do. And the problem is that today, maybe you have a great website that you've invested a lot of money in and it's just not getting you the sales that you're hoping for. You have enough traffic, you have enough visitors, but you're still not seeing their results. So you start wondering and saying, you know, maybe my product is a problem. Maybe, uh, you know, I'm not selling the right product. I would say that nine out of 10 times, that is not the case. And the case is the way you're talking about your product. People are visiting your website. They're not understanding your company, what you do, what you offer, and they don't understand how you can solve their problem. And the reality is that, you know, as consumers, when we visit a website, for example, and we're looking for a product, we generally do not buy the best product available. We just buy the product that we understand, the product that speaks to us and gives us clarity and solves our problem. So you don't have to be, you know, the company with the best tour or the best product out there. You just have to explain it in the clearest form and that will get you the business that you need. Now, if you work towards having the best product and having the most clarity in your website, you have just a winning combination that is really unstoppable online. Um, so think about that, you know, in this whole website design process. Think about yourself when you're searching something online. What is it you're trying to do? You, you're really trying to solve a problem. So maybe you're, you know, your headphones broke and the problem is that you need a new set of headphones. So that's the problem you're trying to solve. And you're going to buy headphones from the company that tells or solves your problem in the best way that has the best price, that explains, you know, all the features that the products have, that it solves uh, the issues that you face. For example, maybe the in-bud headphones fall off your ears, so you're looking for an over-ear option. I don't know. Whatever your problem is, you will end up purchasing from a company that solves these issues, that clearly explains their products and their features, and just it, it's evident for you that it, it solves a problem, and that's the one you will purchase. So that's what we need to do with our websites as well. Um, and the solution in the end is just a website that provides clarity. And how do we do that? Um, we do that using the SB7 framework. It's a seven part framework created by StoryBrand. And I'll explain a little bit more about that, what that means. But essentially this framework helps you build trust with your customers. It makes them listen and it allows you to present your product in a way that the customer feels it's solving their problem. It presents it as the solution for the customer. So in this course, the main objective is for us to teach you how to structure a website landing page, you know, that will convert. And really what we're doing is we're not designing a website, we're going to wireframe a website. And I know the title of the course says design, but I actually put that word there on purpose because to give you clarity, all right? If I would have said, we're gonna help you wireframe a website, maybe some of you don't know what wireframe is, you're confused about that. It's not clear what it's meant to do. The design process of a website involves a wireframe. To me, 
it is the most important process in designing a website. So while we're not go going to go into the specifics of, of design and aesthetics, although I will be talking a little bit about that, it's mainly about giving it the structure and creating the right words, you know, using the story brand framework to create good sales copy, you know, based on this seven part framework that uses story to engage with the audience. And in turn, you know, will help you clarify your company's message through your website. Your audience will listen and in turn, you will see much greater sales. So who am I and why should you listen to what I have to say or teach about website design? Well, my name is Fernando Diaz, and I'm an educator for the ATTA. I've been a member since 2009, and I'm also an ambassador for the Adventure Travel Trade Association for the country of Chile, where I have been living for the last 10 years. Um, in addition to this, I'm the director of marketing for Quasar Expeditions, a high-end adventure travel company that has cruises in the Galapagos Islands and an overland safari operation in southern Patagonia. But None of these credentials, if we can call them that, um, I think really make that big of a difference for you as it relates to what I'm going to teach. I think the two biggest things that I can bring to the table is one, the experience that I have with 16 years doing sales and marketing for the travel industry. And what this, does this mean or imply for you? It means that there's just a massive learning curve behind all of this that is coming to you at a very, very low cost. So essentially in 16 years, I've made a lot of mistakes. Uh, I've wasted a lot of money. I actually did a simple exercise to, you know, think of how much money I had spent in marketing that didn't get me the results from the very beginning. And it adds up to tens of thousands of dollars. So the great benefit for you here is that you can bypass this learning curve take what I have to teach and apply it, and you'll be much better off. So this experience has allowed me to learn, um, again, make mistakes, correct them. And I've also made a lot of correct decisions in, this, in these 16 years that I'm hoping to transmit to you and help you, um, you know, grow your business. The second thing, the second item that really adds value, I think, to, to this course is the fact that I'm a story brand certified guide. Now, some of you may not be familiar with StoryBrand, um, but it's, it's a concept that was developed by New York Times bestselling author Donald Miller. Uh, he created a concept called the StoryBrand Seven Part Framework, which he talks about in a book called Building a Story Brand. I recommend you pick it up if you haven't read it. Uh, but the unique thing about this framework is that it uses story to provide clarity to engage with an audience and to make them listen. So what we'll be doing in this course is really applying this framework to be able to wireframe and build a website that clearly explains what it is you're trying to offer. And why is story so important? Um, let's take these three movies that you may be familiar with, with all three or perhaps just one. They are three of the longest movies created by Hollywood, all of them close to or just past three hours. And so we, we wonder what do these movies have that keep us glued to our seats for three hours? And then there are other movies that are half as long and we want to take off from the movie theater or, or change channels or whatever within the first 30 minutes. And the answer is really how effectively they use, you know, the concept and the flow of story, how there is a character, how there's conflict, how there's resolution, how there's a guide, there's a plan. I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but this is effectively what keeps you engaged. And they do this so well that you didn't even know it. And you spend three hours sitting in a movie theater. Before we dive deeper into this course, I just want to emphasize on this, the importance of sales and marketing for your organization and for any organization for that matter. I'd like to use the analogy of an airplane to explain this. Um, if the airplane represents your company, the left engine would be sales and the right engine would be marketing. They provide the thrust needed for the airplane or the company to take off. The fuselage or the body that represents your overhead, which needs to be as light as possible for the plane to fly. The cockpit represents leadership 
Um, the wings represent the products. And then the final thing is the fuel, which represents your cash flow. So if you think about it, the only thing more important than sales and marketing is the fuel, the cash flow. You can have an amazing company, an amazing website, amazing products and everything. But if you don't have the cash to invest in marketing and product development and all that, the plane will just not take off. But assuming, you know, that cash is not the issue. And I know, depending on when you're watching this, it's either right during COVID or right after COVID or maybe years from now from COVID. If cash is an issue, that's obviously the first thing you have to resolve. But assuming, you know, that that part is stable, your focus should be on sales and marketing. And let me provide an example of two travel professionals to emphasize the importance of this. So let's take these two characters that we're gonna name James and Gina. James and Gina studied travel and hospitality or tourism and hospitality in the same university. Uh, they did an internship while at college at great travel companies, and then they ended up landing jobs at two very reputable travel companies. Five years on, both decided to quit their jobs and create their own travel company. That's actually very common in the travel industry and many, many other industries. And it may be, you know, something that happened to you if you're watching this. So 10 years later, Gina has three different office locations nationwide. She works about half of her day in her travel business and makes about $160,000 a year. And then we have James who 10 years down just has one office location. He works 10 hours a day and hasn't really allowed his business to grow and makes about $60,000 a year. Now, I'm not saying that we need to measure success in terms of the amount of money that they're making or the number of locations. Maybe that, that's not success for you. But what I really want to emphasize here is the growth that these companies have experienced. James essentially just created a job for himself. You know, he's making $60,000, which he was probably making when working at the reputable travel company anyways, but he added the burdens and the stress of having his own company. But on the other hand, Gina was really able to benefit from being an entrepreneur. She works half as much, makes three times more than uh, James does, and has been able to grow. So you may ask yourself and think, well, probably Gina had a much better travel product. You know, maybe her tours were a lot better than James. But the reality in this example is that's not the difference. The difference was in the sales and the marketing. Gina was able to get a consistent inflow of leads and sales into her company that James just was not. And so I want to leave you with this example, knowing that, you know, when you chose to open your own company, or maybe you're in the sales and marketing department and this is just as relevant, but everyone really is a marketer. Maybe you were an adventure guide and you set up your own company. Of course, you still are you know, a great guide, but at the same time, you're a marketer. You have the responsibility to market and sale appropriately for your business to be able to grow. So let that sink in, you know, the fact that you are a marketer. And being on this course is a great step towards improving your skills as a marketer, period. But I highly recommend that you don't stop here. You know, you don't just stop in this course, that you continue to develop your skills in sales and marketing, because I can guarantee you that if you focus your time and your energy on that first, and maybe it's not the most fun part, Maybe you prefer to be out in the field or developing product, and, and that's perfectly fine. But if you focus on sales and marketing first, and you're able to get leads and sales consistently into your business, there will be more time later on, plenty of it, to focus on the things that you really like. But with a business that grows, it doesn't present stress, you know, that you're not worried where the next sale is coming from. You will have set up and fine-tuned a machine that helps you work. So continue to grow, to study, um, I highly recommend if you haven't checked it out to check out my other course on sales funnel, that course in combination with this one is, is just a winner. It'll help you really capture leads through your website. So who is this course for? This course is for startups as well as well-established travel businesses. 
and it doesn't have to be a tour operator or a cruise company. You can sell, you know, apparel or outdoor gear. It really applies for any company, regardless of the industry. Um, but of course, it's specifically zoned into adventure travel. Um, it applies for one man shows, whether it's just you and your company today or whether you work in a company with 500 employees, this applies just in the same way. So basically, if you have a website, if your company has a website and you use that website to educate people about your product or to sell the product directly through the website, if it's an e-commerce site, this course is really for you. So who is this course not for? Um, or perhaps better phrase, you know, what are the things that you're not going to get out of this course? If you're looking for a template, you know, a plug and play template for a website that you can just, you know, stuff in your pictures and your existing copy and make it work. That's not what this course is about. To be able to properly speak to a customer, you need to understand them and you need to say what they want to hear. So every business has a different type of customer. They offer a different type of product. So every website will be different. Um, if you're looking, you know, on tips on how to design beautiful websites, again, this course is, is not for you. You know, we're not going to be talking about aesthetics purely. I will be talking about the proper use of imagery and things like that, but that's really the job of a graphic designer. You are going to come out here with a great wireframe for the website. You know, it'll be how the parts of the website should go and what needs to be said in each one. And then a talented graphic designer can put everything together, make it look beautiful, and there you'll have a winning product. Um, again, if you're looking for information on um, information architecture or just usability, again, we don't focus solely on that. Usability is super important for a website, but I believe if you apply these things properly, a lot of the usability issues will be taken care of for you. And as it relates to information architecture, that's um, a whole other course, you know, that I, unfortunately, I, I don't teach. But information architecture is really how to architect and structure your website entirely. You know, what goes where, how should it should be grouped, how people should navigate through the website. I will have resources and recommended reading on this if you feel that's an issue for your company. But again, this course is about wireframing a website, giving it that structure and putting the right words in that structure to make your customers listen. This course is broken up into seven lessons. Lesson one, where we'll talk about the need and the importance of building or wireframing a proper website. Lesson two, the header. Lesson three, the benefits and value that your product provides to the customer. Lesson four, the authority section. Lesson five, the content paragraph and the video. Lesson six, your product choices and the footer. And finally, lesson seven, or the lead magnet. In lesson one, we'll tell you why it's so important that you build a proper website. We'll go into the details of what exactly this means, because if you do this properly, you'll have clarity. And as I've said before, clear websites outperform good-looking websites 10 out of 10 times. Lesson two is the header. It's the top part of your website, everything that goes above the fold. This is the most important part of your website, period. People give you 10 seconds of their time. That's what a study showed to capture their attention when they visit your website. That's right, only 10 seconds. So for this reason, the header of your website needs to accomplish a lot of things. They need to check a lot of boxes in their minds for you to be interesting to them for your website to be worth their time and for them to continue exploring and scrolling down your website. And the reality is that most websites do not do a proper job in the header. Lesson three is about the benefits and the value that your company and product provide. You have to spell this out to customers. You know this and you know it perfectly and you assume that by showing certain images or perhaps saying a few things, your customers will automatically perceive this, but that's not the case. So you have to talk about your product's benefits. You have to talk in a way that people perceive how this improves their lives, how it solves their problems. And if you do this properly, again, you'll continue 
to pique their curiosity and they will continue scrolling down the website. Lesson four is the authority section. Here we'll talk about the importance of positioning yourself as an authority, but it's very important that you do this in the right way. You can't position yourself as an authority without expressing empathy. People need to know that you understand them and that you can help them, that you're empathetic towards their problem or their need. And then, you know, you can position yourself as the authority in the picture. But if it's all authority, if it's all about credentials, you will come across as perhaps being a little arrogant or they won't trust you immediately. So the authority section is very important and will show you exactly how to position yourself as a proper authority figure. In lesson five, we'll talk about the explanatory paragraph, this paragraph of content that will exist on your website that'll say a lot of important things about your company and that maybe today you have it placed way at the top of your site. I'm gonna tell you why it shouldn't go there, why it should go a little bit below. And I'm gonna explain the benefits of having this paragraph, especially for SEO. In this same lesson, we'll talk about video. And here, well, I'll tell you where your video should be placed inside of your website. I'm also going to include sort of as a bonus, a discussion with a video expert on what it means to create a good video, what a good video should have. So that at the same time, if we're talking about clarity in this whole course, if I'm telling you why it's so important that you're clear about your product, your company, what you offer, how you can solve a customer's problem, the video should essentially do the same thing. And it's a big problem today for most companies that their video does not correlate properly with the rest of the website or with their, what they're trying to say. It's often just a compilation of beautiful music and beautiful imagery that doesn't say much about the product or the company that doesn't help you as a sales tool. And I believe from past experience that videos can be the best sales tools for your company if you do them right. So that section will be important, even though essentially it's not exactly about website design. Then on lesson six, we'll talk about the product choices. Most of you probably, if you offer tours, you offer more than one tour. If you offer um, outdoor gear, you probably offer lots and lots of products. I'm going to teach you how to group these so it's clear for people what you offer without confusing them from the very beginning. You might be inclined to show everything that you have on the homepage because, you know, if they're there already, they want to see everything that you have to offer. But that's not the case. There's a way to group this so that people have a better understanding. And once they know sort of what you offer, then you can guide them into different areas of the website, but without confusing them from the very beginning as to what it is that you offer by just presenting too many choices. And then finally, whatever website has, it's the footer. In StoryBrand, they refer to the footer as the junk drawer. And why they call it the junk drawer is because it has pretty much everything else on your website is located there. So these things that I told you, you know, the fact that your grandpa started the company 80 years ago that you thought was really important, um, that normally goes in the junk drawer. Uh, places for careers, uh, career applications, for example, um, links to your social media channels, all this sort of stuff will go in the footer. And the footer will really contain a lot of information. It's actually very common for people today that if, if they don't find what they're looking for in the header, but go straight to the footer to find it. But our inclination sometimes is to try and put everything up on the header to make sure that they don't miss it. But that's not a good technique, right? We need to just place the things that will get us business, that will help our customers understand who we are and what we offer. That should go at the top and everything else should go at the bottom. And then finally, lesson seven is about the lead magnet. You may have heard of lead magnets also being called lead generators or high value content offers. This section of the website is super, super important. And although I'll only begin to touch upon the importance of this section, I'll basically tell you how to structure it and how to include it on the website. I go into detail on this section in my other course on sales funnels. 
Um, because what a lead magnet essentially does is it captures your customer's contact details so that you can follow up with them, so that you can um, start to build trust and sell them to your product. Very few customers actually do business on the first visit to a website. Um, only the ones that are more inclined that really need to solve a problem quickly will tend to do that. But most people just browse, they look at information, and here is your chance to capture their contact details so that you can continue the sales process with them uh, well after they leave the site. All right, so this section is super important um, and I'll show you how to structure it, where to place it, and why I think every website should have one. Today, for example, if you have a place for customers to sign up for your newsletter, essentially, that is also a lead generator. But I'm going to show you some tips and tricks to maximize the potential of this section so that most people who visit your website, if they have some sort of interest in your product, they will be inclined to give you the contact details in exchange for a valuable piece of information. Um, and that's just crucial. I think it's one of the most important areas of your website. And with that, you know, we'll be done with the course. We'll just wrap it up. And as I said, we're all about execution in this course. So I'm going to provide a plan, an execution plan, so that you're able to put everything into practice that I've taught you. And with that, you'll have an amazing looking website that is ready to receive visitors and convert those visitors into leads so that then you and your sales team can convert them into sales. Or if you are an e-commerce website, it'll translate directly into purchases and sales directly off your site. And finally, I just wanna make a brief mention on the resources, the worksheets, the videos, the expert interviews that we have. Although these are extra assignments or it's you know, homework or bonus material, I highly recommend that you do these because they will allow you to apply the stuff that you're learning. Once applied, you'll get a much better grasp of it. Uh, you might begin to understand the concepts in the course, but if you do the worksheets and the related material, if you watch the expert interviews, you'll have a much better understanding of these. So I just want to emphasize, don't skip these, do them. If it means, you know, pausing the video, doing the exercise and resuming the next day, you know, so be it, but they're important. They're there for a reason, and I really encourage you to do them all. So that's it. That is what this course on how to design high converting websites that help you grow your business is all about. And I'm, again, I'm super excited that you're here, and I'll see you in the first lesson.